The serial I.O. symbol is like an analog equate and an analog initialized squashed together and then converted for use with serial signals. The serial I.O. uses the speed key SIO and can be added to your program by expanding the serial folder under logic symbols and then clicking and dragging the serial I.O. over to the detail view. So it's tough to tell at first, but the symbol actually does two things. It can send strings and it can compare strings. The expandable digital inputs all have parameters attached to them, and these are placeholders for strings that can be transmitted over the TX output. The delimiter parameter adds more characters to any string inside of the transmit parameters. So if n1 goes high, the string in the string1 parameter plus whatever's in the delimiter will be transmitted to the transmit line. The SIO also takes the characters on the RX line and compares them one by one to the characters in the parameters that have digital outputs. While the characters in the RX line match the characters that are in the parameter, the digital output will stay high. But if there's any difference between the strings as the characters are compared, the output will go low. Finally, the enable input allows the symbol to work. If there's a signal on the input and the signal is low, all of the SIO's outputs will go low. Let's make a quick example program. I'm going to add a multiple one shot and a toggle. The serial IO will have four digital inputs and four digital outputs. The four inputs will be driven by output directly from the X panel. And the strings that we'll be sending are power on, power off, HDMI 1 and standby. The serial output of the SIO will be routed back to its RX input, as well as a serial join on the X panel. And the strings that we're going to be looking for are power, HDMI 1, off, and standby. The digital outputs of the SIO will be routed to the X panel so that we can see when a perfect match is made. Since a match can also be temporary, these same outputs will be routed to the multiple one-shot, which will have a pulse time of 3 seconds. We'll take the outputs of the multiple one-shot and route them back to the X panel. And then we're going to take the clock input of the toggle and drive it with output from the X panel. And the toggle's output will be the enable and disable for the SIO. And now all we have to do is compile and upload. All right, so these are the buttons that are going to trigger the strings to be sent. These buttons represent the output coming straight from the SIO, and then these buttons represent the output that's been filtered through the one shot. So these buttons will tell us when a full match is made, and these guys will tell us when a temporary match has been made. But nothing is going to happen until we set the enable line high. When we trigger the string one input, the string 5 one shot goes high for 3 seconds, but the SIO output doesn't stay high. And that's because only the first 5 characters of the parameter match the transmitted string that was in parameter number 1. When string number 3 is triggered, we get an exact match on the string 6 output, which should be obvious because these two strings, HDMI 1, are exactly the same. But watch what happens when we trigger string 2. The string 5 output goes high temporarily because the first 5 characters matched each other, just like when string 1 was triggered. But string 7 stays high, even though there isn't an exact match between the parameter and the transmitted string. And this happens because the comparison is made on a character by character basis, and the very last characters of the transmitted string and the parameter match exactly. If string number 2 had an extra character at the end of it, then only a temporary match would be found. So there are a couple things we can take away from this. Number one is a digital output on the SIO will stay high if the last characters of the received string match the string parameter completely. And the second one is that a digital output on the SIO will go high temporarily if the string parameter is contained somewhere inside of the received string. The SIO is used pretty much any time you want to communicate with third-party equipment, especially over a comm cable. Devices will have special commands that they accept to make them perform certain functions, and they'll usually return strings to the processor to acknowledge that a function has been carried out or that an error has occurred. 
What most people do is expand the SIO to include all of the commands they'll need to control that device, and then do the same thing for the feedback that they expect to receive from the device. All right, well, that wraps it up for this video. Thank you everyone for watching, liking, and subscribing. We'll see you in the next one.